a good morning and then uh, welcome all of you to the next day's uh, program on uh, ebis inventory uh, we have completed the controls then uh, we are into transfers and then we are into the last of the transfers which is interog in transit so let me go and then share my screen and then start the activity for the day So you have one uh, material transfers. This material transfer is now going to tell you about. Okay, not this one. Now go back to day three. Now Fine. IOT in transit. In day three, we have a document called IOT in transit, and then we are going to make a discussion on this now. You know, more than begin this. IOT in transit. Now, in this case, what happens? I have now depicted two arcs. If I, you're going to move the material between two arcs, between the 0, 1, 1 R to 0, 1, 2 R. So, this is how I'm going to move it now. So, when I want to move it, if either the cost is appreciable or if the time taken is appreciable or if both of them are appreciable, we have to configure the network as in, as in transit now. The shipping network has to be configured as in transit now. So you have to configure this as in transit. And then uh, if you have the ILTT defined interlocation transit times, Oracle Transportation Management will be using it to a great extent. So it will also tell you about when exactly it is going to arrive also. <clears throat> so we will now begin with the ILTT configuration now. ILTT configuration, when you want to move the material between two arcs using an in transit transfers. In an in transit transfers, either cost or time or both are appreciable, then what happens, you'll now go for an in transit transfers. And then go there. So let us now go there and then define the ILTT now. Fine. You go there, go to setups, and then uh, I will now switch responsibility to inventory. You go to setups, and then you go to organization. In the setups itself, one second, now go to the setups. We will have to first of all define the carriers actually. And go there, you go to the freight carriers. You go to set up freight carriers and then define the carriers over here now. Find that what you want. Let me define the carrier over here now. So I will now say B11 underscore what happens? I will now say carrier. So I am not defining the carrier. So I am now giving a name for this software. Take copy of it and then put on the short name. I will now say V1 on car. And then here I am now going to give the service levels. How I am going to provide the service now? Fine, go there. Let us say I will now say next day. I find there are so many service levels. I will now choose the next day arrow. You know, the mode is uh, not drop down. It will not take as a year. So the moment you hit the service level and mode, the ship method gets created automatically. It's a combination of the short name, service level, and then the mode. And then that is how what happens. The shipping method gets automatically created. And then at first, what happens? You go there, click on the address. And then you can even what happens? add a new address over here. And then click on the contacts. You can even give the contact person's name on this particular area. And then go to the classification. Uh, some of them are mandatory. I go there. I don't the, or is it third party logistics or a carrier? And again, 3PL will be coming into picture uh, when you have the warehouse management system installed now. You go to the carrier and then defend it. And then you go to the ratings. And then in the address, what happens? Uh, what you can do is we can even uh, uh, give a commit now. First, let me first commit. Give a commit. Let's commit. Save it now. It is not done. <coughs> so this can be assigned to multiple orgs also. And when you give in the save, what happens? The organization assignment button will be coming now. Once when the carrier is now getting defined, what happens? We'll be getting the organization assignment button. So through which what happens? We can assign this to multiple orgs. Basically. So it is not done. And then you go to the service level. Here you are getting the organization assignments. Click on it. Now what I'm going to do is from B11 to M1, I'm going to move fine. Click on the organization assignment. Let me assign it to both the orgs now. Click on organization assignment. So here what happens? We query it now and go there, go to the query mode. <clears throat> click on it and then go to query mode. It's a B11. I'm querying it now. And then put a tick mark on the sign and then save it. And then let me put M1 also. Let me query it. The transaction is complete. Now, fine, go there. Let me query M1 also. M1 and then I'm querying it now. So, M1 also. I'm assigning it now. Commit. So, it's now assigned to both the places. Control F11 will now retrieve all the data. Fine. All the assigned organizations are coming up at the top. So, this particular carrier can be assigned to what happens to all or assign all and all of these combinations are over here. It is now assigned for this pair now. So here, what happens? Oracle Transportation Management as well as the third-party logistics software will be using it to a great extent as far as the shipping method is concerned. 
they got so many other things are there. So with this what happens, they cannot do this. One. So we have not defined a simple carrier with the appropriate shoe method. Now we go there and then I define the interlocation transit times now and go there. We are not going to define the interlocation transit times. So you go there, go to setups, find organization, fine. And then you go there. You go to the interlocation transit times. So how much of time it is going to take place for moving the material from B11 to M11? So the interlocation transit times will tell you how much time it is going to take. Time. So we will not define the interlocation transit times over here now. Control down arrow, we will not create a new record now. Control down arrow. So what happens, it is the internal location or external location. Find the internal location. So location is what? B1 and then personally we go tap. So B1 metallus is there. And then again internal location is what? It is Seattle manufacturing. So it is M1 Seattle manufacturing. Sorry. M1 Seattle manufacturing is the one. So when you want to move from the B1 uh, Madras location to the Seattle manufacturing, what happens? We are not going to use which shipping method. You want to say B11, then you tap. I'm using it. Fine. In transit time, I'm going to say three days time. Fine. And then the transportation management will be using the capacities now. Daily capacity in terms of units of measures. Fine. I'm going to say it is 1000 as a capacity. And then kilograms, kg. <coughs> Fine. Kilograms. And then what happens? Cost per unit is not the one. So costing also will be calculated. And then by volume also we can know the capacity. Fine. So we can even define the capacities by volume now. And then the currency is also coming up. Fine. There are so many things there. Fine. Go there. And then what happens? I'll say cubic meter. <coughs> yeah, meter cube. But it's not coming. So go there. We can even say what happens? Volume wise also can do the capacity. Currency is for everything. So now we are having multiple what happens? Your shipping methods between two locations. So if you have what happens, the transportation management installed. If the customer wants it tomorrow, the system will not suggest to send it by air. And because the customer needs it tomorrow. If he says after five days he needs it, what happens? You send it by what happens? Train. No, not in the way. If he says that what happens, you I need it only after a month's time, we can even send it by bullet card because the bullet card may be very cheap basically. So what happens? It will now optimize your transportation based upon what happens the customer's requirement. So that what happens, you'll be able to save money a lot of money. So OTM will now optimize your transportation and then what happens, it will now arrive at the exact best one. So we have. So define the interlocation transit times and then it will be used by OTM fine, to a great extent. And then the third party logistics also will be using this uh, transit, uh, transit times. Uh, the 3PL logistics will also be using it. So in a warehouse uh, management system, we can all see this. So now we have completed the carrier creation as well as the shipping method creation along with ILTT now, interlocation transit times. Go there, close it now. So specifically everything, fine, close it now. Now what happens, we go there and then we are going to modify the shipping network. So in this case, what happens, our shipping network is going to be in transit from B11 to M11. Fine, I'm going to make it as in transit. Now fine, go there. I will now go to yes, no, yes, down, down. Will now take you to what? The shipping network now. Set up organization shipping network, the navigation, double click on it. And then you will now choose for B11 or. Fine, I will now choose R. This is from R, I'm choosing it now. Fine. Leave the scope as such now, leave it and then click inside, it will automatically show you. If you click on the front, it will automatically show you what you configured now. It will now pick up fine models. B1 on M1 is already there. So we initially configured as direct organization transfers. I am now going to make it as an in transit transfers. So make a change to in transit now. Fine. Go there. Now, FOB. FOB comes into picture. Fine. What happens? It is now up to or receipt or shipment now. It's a very important one. So here, what happens? The costing is involved. Fine. The costing is involved. I will explain all this paper about what exactly happens now. So once when the material wants to be transferred from this location to this location, what happens? You will now call the carrier. <clears throat> the carrier will be coming and then the vehicle will be arrived over here now. So metal will be loaded into this place. Now. So the loading cost can be calculated with the help of a job now. You can create a job for loading. <clears throat> Fine. Once when you create a job for loading, what happens? The system will now calculate the loading cost as C1. So the vehicle is now loaded with the material. So the loading cost is also calculated. So you know, run the job and then the job will now collect cost actually. Job is going to collect cost and then you'll be having this much of a cost as far as loading is concerned. And this is called the shipment point. Now what happens from here, what happens, it will now go, move towards the destination R. And then the receipt point is a gate now. So the gate is known as what? The receiving section and then this is the, receiving, this is the gate of the R. Now, fine? So once when the vehicle leaves this place and then goes towards the destination R, what happens? The material are in transit. Now. The metals are in transit. So when you are leaving it, when you are leaving it, what happens? You will be writing an interlock shipment number on the consignment on the paper basically, and then what happens? You will now allow the vehicle to move. <clears throat> so this is written on the delivery chalon. The interlock shipment number will be written on the delivery chalon, and then the vehicle will be moving from the shipment point towards the receipt point. And then during this transit, 
what happens you'll be having lots of transit expenses like what happens you'll be incurring freight charges you will not have the packing and poverty you will have the transit insurance and then taxes duties of choice whatever is applicable and then the toll tax and then you will not give some mamul to the police officer if the uh, this thing is very bulky what happens the police officer will ask for a bribe and then you'll be giving this also so here what happens there are so many other transit expenses uh, depending upon the country and then the region wherever you are working upon so you'll be having it so all these transit expenses are broadly classified into freight as well as non freight right so we can classify them as a freight and non freight so the transit is divided into things freight and non freight and so what happens this has to be entered into your what happens your transaction forms the freight and non freight and then what happens this transit expense cost is c3 plus c3 so when it is moving from the shipment point to the receiving point what happens we are going to incur a cost of c3 fine so the transit expenses are divided into freight and non freight and go there go further and now what happens once when you make a receipt in the gate what happens the receiving transaction is now performed now we will now perform a receiving transaction and then the system will be getting a grn number so once when the grn number is created what happens it will be now sent to the delivery point from there what happens the vehicle will be allowed and then a delivery point is very near to the uh, sub inventory of the org now fine so it will now go there so here what happens you will not perform a delivery transactions and then once you perform it what happens the here what happens you won't make any inspection at all because it's our own material and so what happens we cannot make any inspection as such so you will not have only a physical verification basically and then we will not visually uh, what happens inspect it whether any the damages are not if anything is found damage what happens we cannot return the material remember item from 012 to 01 return is not possible at all because of our internal material so in which case what happens you know make a reverse iot and then send it back no return only in the case of suppliers we can perform a return right for iot return is not possible so what it do is you will now make a visual inspection and then if everything is okay what happens you will now unload the material into the org so the unloading cost is set so this is also what happens we cannot create a job and then what happens you can collect the cost of unloading so the entire transaction when you are moving the material from one lot to other lot what happens we are incurring a c1 cost for loading and then we are incurring a c2 cost for unloading and then we are having what a transit expenses of c3 so in this case what happens c1 has to be always borne by the source organization and then c2 only the destination organization has to show well now what happens the question comes for c3 now who is going to bear c3 so there the fob comes in now it is called free on board now fine in uh, in india it is called freight on board whereas universal it is known as free on board so what is the free on board point the fob is always for the destination org so fob is always considered for the destination or so for the destination fob is shipment if you say up to the shipment point everything is free for him if you say up to the ship fob is shipment up to shipment point everything is free for him and then the beyond which he has to bear all the expenses so that means what if you say fob is going to shipment if you say fob is going to what 011 org will now bear c1 and then the 012 org will now bear the unloading cost plus the transit expenses cost right it will now bear these two things now. so the shipment cost is like this if i say fob is going to receipt what happens is what so here what happens you will not say uh, this is the point up to which what happens everything is free for you in this case what happens c1 will be borne by the first org as well as c3 also c3 also will not go on the fall of this and then what happens only c2 will not he has to bear now so if fob is going to receipt what happens you know bear these two things actually what happens the fob point will be given by the customer your customer will be giving you which is your fob point with the shipment of receipt here in this case what happens if both the orgs are strategic business units that means what the management is evaluating what happens let us say how much of profit and loss it is making or how much of expenses it is making you want and then accordingly what happens they will not see the fob point so once the fob is given what happens the c1 c2 c3 cost are automatically posted to the respective orgs you need not have to do anything you only perform a transfer so the moment you perform a transfer the c1 c2 c3 everything gets posted automatically based upon fob <coughs> it will be posted automatically so no need to do anything at all in the back end fine bonus and then if the orgs are going to be across indies fine if it is going to be across the indies what happens naturally what happens you will be having the inter company payables and then the inter company receivable setup has to be done now then only you should do it from inventory perspective what happens it will not stop you from making it fine it belongs to one lady <coughs> it is india lady <coughs> and then the pakistan lady then what happens when you perform a transfer the system will not say anything but what happens it will not be appropriately posted to the appropriate lady so if it is across lady the inter company payables and inter company receivables must be set properly in financials before you initiate the intra transfer that is a must otherwise what happens costing will not go into the respective orgs or in the respective lady's basically <clears throat> for your financial calculation
So in the entire process, what happens? We have got only C1, C2, C3. Fine, go there. And then this is how it works. <coughs> Any doubts on this now on the intra transfers? <coughs> Good that you understood. And so what happens when you make a transfer? What happens once when you what happens when you ship the product? What happens? It won't be visible on the destination all along. <coughs> In the destination, what happens? We have to do two transactions. One is at the receiving point, you will not perform a receive transaction. And then at the deliver point, you will not perform a deliver transaction. So only when you receive and deliver, what happens? The stock will be visible on this place. The stock will be visible on this place. And you have to manually run the jobs. The job has to be manually run. There will be what happens? It will be collecting the cost. Otherwise, what happens? There is no automatic running of the jobs. Basically. So you only have to manually run the job. And then ensure that what happens? The cost is collected for this interrupt transfers. Basically. Whereas here, in this place, what happens? The freight and non freight you have to mention on the transaction lines. So, that what happens? C3 has got two components one is a freight, one is a non freight. So, the moment you mention it, what happens? The system will be posting the C3 either to the flows or the destination depending on the FOB, FOB settings. So, go there. We'll not set up this shipping network now. Fine, go there. We'll not set up the shipping network. Go there. Click on it now. Uh, I will not keep my cursor on this place. I will not make it as in transit. The FOB is going to result. Fine, what is this? Elemental visibility enabled. In costing, what happens? There are five cost elements of that. Material, and then what happens? Resource, resource over it, over it, and then outside process. So these are the five elements. Let us say while you are manufacturing the product in this area, let us say I am now going to manufacture the product in 0, 1, 1, and then I am sending it to 0, 2 only for spraying now. So what happens? I am going to employ, employ, deploy a resource for doing a spray, and then what happens? You will be carrying a spraying machine also as a resource over it. And then with that, what happens? You're going to do it. So we want to collect the cost of spraying. Um, uh, what happens? The cost of uh, what happens? Your uh, paint, as well as the resource workers' cost, as well as the pay, spraying machines' cost, has to be collected in this all. So you've got uh, two, three elements which are involved for what happens? Uh, the cost component, as such, when you're doing it, when you're doing, when you're performing the spraying activity. Spraying is a different job. Unloading is a different job. So when you perform a spraying job, what happens? It will be collecting this. So here, what happens? Initially, it has come with some cost. Let us say material cost is hundred. And then the resource cost is let us say 15. Right? So once when you transfer it, if you wanted the resource, the painter resource has to hit only the resource cost, then what happens? You enable the elemental visibility. If you enable the visibility, what happens in the destination or whenever you are making any value addition to it, what happens? The respective cost elements are charged. Right? The respective cost elements are charged. And so what happens? You won't be finding what happens at the thing. But many times, what happens when you want to do some value addition in this place, you do not want to track the individual cost elements. Right? Here, here it is 15 in the resource, and then what happens? Another 10 is getting added. So, resource will be added for 10 to 10, 15 plus 10, 25. Right? The material cost will not be affected, that will be 100. So, if you want to have the individual cost element to be loaded when the job is performed in the destination or enable the variable visibility. If you are enabling the visibility, what happens? The system will be able to visualize each and every individual uh, what happens, cost elements. If you don't do it, what happens? Everything clubbed together, it will now go as a lump sum over here as a material cost. It is a 650. So on 650, what happens? Whatever job cost is going, everything will now go into the material cost. So some organizations may not be interested in what happens, knowing that what happens, the breakup of the cost, or whatever has been added in this place. But in the source or what happens, you'll have all the five cost element cost. But in the destination, when it goes, what happens? You add some value addition and then finally you send it to another warehouse. Uh, warehouse. And then the individual's cost is now lost. You will now have everything summed up to the top or rolled up to the top, and then only material cost will be visible. And then any further transactions upon it, what happens? Everything will be reflected as only material cost. So organization to organization varies whether you want to enable the element of visibility or not. Receipt routing is just like exactly in purchasing. We have got three point direct standard inspection. In this case, what happens? Direct is not correct. So it has to be either standard or inspection, and then inspection is also not correct for interruption. And then the moment you put a tick mark on the internal order required, what happens? We can move the material between V11 to M1 only through IR IS4 route. Internal requisition, internal sales order route. Fine. So if this is enabled, we can only move through IR IS4 route. Fine. We cannot perform an IOT. And if you remove the tick mark, what happens? We can move the material only through IOT. There is improper transfers only and not through IR IS4. So IR IS4 and then IOT are mutually exclusive. You can choose only one, either this or that, right? not both. So you want to go there, <coughs> click on it, and then go there. And then what happens? Yes, if you choose this only, ISO is allowed. 
And then this is a manual result at external situation. If you want, what happens? You can even make a manual result find that allows you to do it. Find it doesn't have any functionality. The system at this point. And then afterwards, what happens? You go to the transfer business. Here, what happens? The transfer charge. So here, what happens? You, if the items are costed, we can even put a requested percentage or a predefined percentage. If items are not costed, we cannot use these two options at all. We can only go for a requested value. In many cases, what happens? The the carrier, the carrier driver or the carrier organization, the, the transportation organization will be having a request. So at the time of what happens, you will not see the bulginess. Fine. So much of items are there, what happens, you will not ask so much of the people. So if you choose this one, either as a requested percentage or a requested percentage, what happens, uh, we can even uh, put the value, but items are not cost or so not coming. So you go for the requested value. So at the time of transfer, transaction, mm -hmm. yeah, what happens, it will be coming. So you go there. And then what is the distance between this one? Fine, kilometers, km, and then you will tap. So I will not say kilometers, the one. So I will not say 350 kilometers. And then go for that. And then you go for that. So, you know, given the distance. So, the distance is only for information. It doesn't have any functionality. You go to the primary accounts. So, here, what happens if you go on and see, we are now provided what FOB as either shipment or result. So, based upon which, what happens, C3 has to be loaded here or there. So, the system will be what happens populating all these accounts like transfer credit, purchase price variance, secondary account, fine, all other accounts, fine, all other accounts. It will be picking up from the respective organization and then it will now populate over here. So the PP has to be populated from where all these things fine. If you go there, what are the interlock receivables? What are the interlock payables? Every account will be coming up from the, the appropriate org. And then from there, what happens? It will be populating on the space. So you set up the inventory org very properly with the appropriate accounts. The system will now automatically populate all these things. So this is the intransit inventory. Here, what happens? If you go and then query this account in financials, it will not tell you at any point of time how much of material is in the intransit model, how much of metal is in the, on the move. So they can very well decide and then it can then. This is for Oracle subcontracting. And then this is a transfer price which is used in IRISO. I don't know exactly this part. Fine. Uh, it is basically along with India localization, they use it now. But uh, this part is known, not known to me because we never conduct this part in the training program fine? because uh, localization part, we don't do it. So along with the localization, the transfer price with the price list is also there. I don't know what exactly it is. <clears throat> Since I don't know localization, so what happens? I'm not aware of this particular part. So this much is now done. Fine, go there. And then commit, that was commit. So the transactions are complete. So now we have defined it. Now what happens if we can now associate the shipping method over here? You go to the tools and then click on the shipping methods. Now. So from B1 to M1, what happens? We are going to click on the tools, the shipping methods. So we are going to do it now and go there. You click on it and then here what happens? I will not say B11 and then give a tab. So I'm putting it now. So in transit time, it was defined as three days here. I can even override it the five days. And go there. Daily capacity is 1500. And go there. Uh, what happens? The load weight, fine kilograms, kg. Into a tab. So kilograms, I'm putting it now and go there. Uh, and then a cost per unit is one. <clears throat> and then daily volumes is 2000. But you can even override whatever you have defined. But it has to default, but it's not defaulting. I don't know why it's so fine. It's a meter cube. Go tab. Orders. And the default method, if you make it, what happens? This becomes the default method automatically. Right? One of them will be a default. And then what happens using transportation management, we can even override the defaults. And remember, ACP model will be using this degree next. ACP will now. Based upon the cost optimization, which you are now defining on your what happens plan. If your plan has to be cost optimized, what happens? It will not decide which shipping method is very much suitable for this movement of material between this or this one. So ACP's cost optimization will not decide the appropriate uh, what happens. It has to what happens uh, meet the scheduled ship dates as well as see the cost. Fine. Whichever costing method is there, fine. ACP is doing it. Uh, and then uh, transportation management is also using it. There are so many other models will be using this shipping method as well. So close it by which what happens? We are now completed defining this now. Fine, go there. So the shipping method is not fully defined. Close it now. Now let us go and then perform this. Now. So let me go and then get an item now. I go items, master items. And then I will now say D11 underscore what happens? IOT underscore in transit. So I'm now creating an item. So is the in transit item creating it? And take a copy of it and then put the description now. And then go there. Tools copy from and then let me apply a template of purchase interface and go there. You know that. And then I go to the inventory, fine, it's okay. Fine. Nothing else is required apart from this, fine, go there and then commit. And then let me assign it to both the ox, fine, both the source and destination, fine, go there. I will now put a tick mark on this, now fine, commit. And then we'll now query the destination org also, fine, go there, I'll now query M1 now. M1 and getting it now, fine, I'll now go and put a tick mark on the sign, fine, commit. And then if you give a control of flow on order, it'll now show both the assigned organizations in the top alphabetically, and then after that, the master org, the balance unassigned orgs are also coming up alphabetically. Then as I know, so it's not assigned to both the arcs. 
So since we have already defined the shipping network as in transit, what happens? We can go there and see this. Fine, go to the transactions, and then here what happens? We are not allowing negative transactions because what happens? We go to sell soapy, and here what happens? We are already allowing negative transactions. So without even material in the system, in, but physically material must be available. Fine, physically is not available means it is not possible. So in the system, what happens? We can even allow drive the inventory negative because of certain reasons. The material is available here, but what happens is the inventory in charge has not made the entry into the system, so it is not showing a zero. It doesn't matter. Fine, go there. Now, what happens? We go there, perform the transaction, go to the transactions, and then go to interop transfers. So you are now going to perform an interop transfer, double clicking on it, and then you are going to wait. Now. Fine, click on it. So the two are control L. Fine, based upon the things it will be coming. Fine, it is not coming only as a Boston. Fine, mainly because what happens? The Seattle is not coming because we have made the movement of material between B11 to M1 as what IoT. So because of which is now Boston is coming, so M2 is now coming. So what happens? We go there and then make a correction on the shipping network now and collapse all. Fine. SOS down down. Enter. We go to the shipping network. Click inside and then here what happens? If you go and then remove the tick mark, then only IoT can be performed. Otherwise, what happens? B11 to M1 must be on an IR ISO roof. Fine. Remove it now. Now what happens? IoT can only be performed. We cannot move it on IR ISO. Fine. Both are basically like what happens? You are Congress and BJP. Fine. So. If this is there, that is not there. Fine. Only one of them can be the rest. So remove this internal order required. So what happens? We can now move material between only way. IoT route now. Fine. Go there. Close it now. So you go to transactions, and then here what happens? You go to what? Interop transfers. You go to the interorganization transfers. Here what happens? We go to make a transfer now. Go there. <coughs> and then click on this R and Control L. Fine. Here what happens? I'm not going to go there. So here what happens? I'm going to choose M1. M1 is also coming. Previously M1 was not coming. Go there. Type is only interlock transfer. Fine, go there. Type is only interlock transfer. So here, what happens? You go there and then see this is not fine. Today is 23rd. But since ILTT is not really exp uh, what happens running in the normal one, in the normal one, only on the uh, Oracle Transportation Management and other models. So it's like really saying expected date is now getting default as today's date. Otherwise, what happens? It will be exactly defaulting. Uh, what happens? Uh, it will now honor the ILTT. Basically. It will now honor the ILTT. Fine, go there. If you have the global order promising in order management, that also will honor the ILTT. ILT will be honored by those models, but not pure inventory. So here, what happens? You go there, the freight, the containers, all these things. You can give it now, and then click on the number. Here, number is a mandatory one. When you perform a transfers through what happens? The direct organization transfers. The number is not mandatory, so it goes there. The fine check, check, it will not go and then sit on the destination organization. Fine. So here, what happens? We have to have a number. Fine. Let's say Nana underscore one zero one. I'm not giving it. We can even make it this thing. And then click on the transaction lines here. What happens? The interop shipment number is a mandatory, which will be written on the delivery chalon. Right? Go there. They will be writing the uh, interop shipment number on the delivery chalon. Right? I have worked there in the system some uh, uh, 30, 40 years back. In which there are no computers. So we used to write uh, our own numbers on the delivery chalon and then send it out. Because what happens is the government regulation is without a number, it cannot go and go there. When you're traveling on the road, what happens? There are so much of Click on the transaction lines, click on it, and then here go there inside. And then I will now go for what IOT in transit. Now. Fine percentage, IOT percentage, and then you tap. So I will now choose the IOT in transit now. Fine. Go and put it in so, and then go there. Give the source subordinate. So go there. I will now put it. Fine. Control L. I will now choose the RMS one over here now. And then go there. This is destination subordinate. I will now put stores here. Stores the destination subordinate. I go there. I am now going to transact some ten quantities now. Fine. Go there. So if this transaction is uh, from B1 to M1 is across uh, what happens uh, LEs now, across LEs. Remember to set up the intercompany payables and receivables flow. If this org is going to be in a different LE, what happens? Set up. Otherwise, what happens? The cost will not be kept properly. Fine, go for that. <clears throat> Fine, go there. It's not giving you all, hey, come on, you know, you don't have any stock at all yet. It doesn't matter. Chale you okay? Fine, it will not go for that. Fine, go there. And now here, what happens? I'm not going to put the quantity. Quantity is what 10 I have given. Now, fine, go for that. Now I can even give a reason for this now. If a reason is applicable. Now what happens? I will not say <coughs> the transportation cost is coming. Fine. I will not say what is the transportation cost. Fine. So the transportation cost is nothing but freight here. Fine, it will go there. So the freight is a transportation cost. Fine. I will not go there. I will not put pun and day and go there. So the moment you put the transportation cost, just you hit the appropriate account, the account becomes mandatory. I am not putting a junk account. In reality, what happens? We will be putting the appropriate account. So what happens? We are now giving the freight cost as well as the freight account. Only when you put the freight cost, the account is coming. Whereas the added value is non freight. Fine. <clears throat> added value is non freight. So here, what happens? It is what? Packing and forwarding, transit insurance, taxes, toll, mamul, everything put together is a basically a non freight expense. Fine. Remember, non freight and non freight cannot be calculated automatically. There is no automatic means of calculating it. You only have to manually enter both the, both the information on the transaction. Fine. 
freight and non freight has to be manually entered we you don't have any automatic means of calculating it so let's say i have paid something to somebody some supplier from there can i bring it on hook you know it's not possible so you have to enter the freight and non freight manually only go there i will not sit already if i go there so the system will not take care of based upon fob fine you will not see whether fob is shipped or reserved fine the c3 gets posted automatically to the respective organization either the first org or second org the source org or destination org the system will be posting it automatically along with that what happens uh, collected cost of what happens here loading and unloading fine when they are including the job and that's it what happens now 10 quantities are going towards the destination 10 quantities are going to the destination and go there so the bo bo Uh, the item fine take probably it and then are going over there so let me go on and commit it now fine what is going on so we are now entered everything and then what happens the transaction is now going on so in this form we are not entering shipping method right nowhere shipping method, ship method is already, yeah shipping method is not entered here at all the shipping method is decided automatically by acp module by the oracle transportation module and other modules will do whichever is more optimal so shipping method is nowhere entered at all this form it is only for automatic decision making and then uh, that too what happens done by other modules and not by inventory inventory will now use the default method fine the default method will be used for shipping as such so it takes a transaction fine the transaction is complete fine close it let us go and then see the stock here fine go there let's go and then see the stock put on and availability and then go to on and quantity let us see item items such that it is working here on fine go there put item second such item second such i will not put the item mask as the item number here and then show quantity <clears throat> and then click on find now is not coming come on what happened i don't know there's some problem here so it's not working as such <clears throat> that is what happens you go there go to on and availability on the on and quantity so go to on and availability and on and quantity and then query for the item it will not show the stock as minus 10 the source of operation i go there you paste it on this place right you paste it on the data and then find out the stock will be shown as minus 10 because this much has gone wrong right So minus two. If you go on and try to query on the destination org, you'll not be having anything at all. I'll go there. I will not go to this place. Let me change it to M1 now. I'm the organization is M1, so I'm not querying on this M1. I'll go there. Paste the item over here, and then click on find. So it's no push. Nothing is there. Assessment. Item is not there at all. There's no line at all. So in the M1 org, we don't have anything at all. I'll go there. Now what happens? This is considered as an intransit inventory. I'll go there. So this is not on the intransit page. Fine. Now. When you query the in-transit uh, account number in financials, it will not tell you in total how many consignments are in transit throughout the uh, throughout the country actually, throughout the area actually. So you can even see the total value of the items which are now on the road. Actually. If there is suddenly a road strike, then we have to inform all the carriers that what happens. You park somewhere side because there is a suddenly a road. Uh, yeah, what happens? A strike has been announced by some transportation companies. So likewise, what happens? You can even control those things. So you will not know how much of uh, worth of material is uh, at risk actually. So the in-transit account will be telling all those things now. Fine, go there in the way. Now we will now go and then make a reserve in the gate. Fine, we are going to go and then make a reserve in the gate and go there. So let us go there. We will not change the order. Yeah. Uh, can we see material transaction in B1? Yeah, exactly. We can now see the material transaction. Go to transactions and go to material transaction now. So in the material transaction, we can very well see the transaction on this now. Fine, go there. We can now see the material transaction. So transaction, material transaction. We have now populated the item over here now. Fine, go there and then find out. So we can now see the material transaction. So you can now see this not finding orders. You can go there. So minus ten has gone there. Transaction date, find the primary quantity. You know, show you all these things. It is in transit shipment. The transaction date is in transit, and there are so many things on the in transit also. Fine, and go there. The shipment number is also shown over here, so we can very well see this. And if you have costed it, it will not show on the distributions also. The distributions, what about the costing amount also will be coming up fine. It says which account it has hit now fine. So uh, the entries and contract entries are there. Fine. This will now give you a lot of information on this. Man. The values is not available. Otherwise, what happens? The distribution will now give you the costing also. So, so we can now see a lot of things are there. There are so many dimensions are there. Some of them will be very useful for you as such. Close it now fine. So the middle transaction will definitely give you. Now what happens? You change the R T M one now. Fine. They change the R T M one. Fine. The same one. So I'm not changing it there now. So here what happens? I'm going to make a result in the gate now. Fine. Go there. I will now go to what? I will now perform a receipt sign. I go to transactions and then what happens? I will now go to the receiving and then receipts. This is called the gate of an organization. Here, what happens? I am going to perform a receipt transaction. So once when you perform a receipt, what happens? The GRN number gets created. Okay. The GRN number will be created, and then that will be what happens? That will be used for further 
uh, what happens the tracking of the battery which in my company it is a very strict instruction that any material which is crossing the gate must be referenced only with the gr number and not by the po number or intro ship number or etc etc and nothing is allowed which is order number item number nothing we should query only in the gr number fine so many companies will be having this uh, philosophy fine the discipline basically by gr and query for any uh, any transaction which is not crossing the gate actually go there and then go to the results had it been a asn advanced shipment notice there what happens we have to run a concurrent called what happens receiving transaction process only upon rtp what happens the transaction number will be visible otherwise what happens you will not be able to see the transaction number at all so i go there i go to the transactions receiving receipts and then i am in the destination org of m1 can go there the shipment number will be visible for asn only after you run the receiving transaction process but here it will be visible i will not put nana even percentage will give it it will be visible so it says who is the supplier supplier is a source organization fine hyderabad organization is a source organization so supplier is a, not a real supplier this is an internal uh, one fine the shipment number is coming fine go there the shipment number will be visible for as and only after you run the rtp concurrent now whereas in the case of iot no need to run any concurrent it immediately go there, go there click on find now i am going to find it out so what happens in m1 i am finding it out and go there and then uh, what happens we can even give some value additions to the one the consignment which has arrived at your place now by giving extra information on the header now so if you go on the query it will not show you what exactly is now coming <clears throat> and remember the shipping uh, time the interlocution transit time is not exactly in a sensed by the inventory it is not saying today itself what happens you can very well receive it so if you have a packing slip number carrier and then container any value addition to this what happens you can now put it over here and then close the receipt later. so they will be recorded as such now and close it so any value addition you can do it now and close it and then here what happens you close it and then select the line and then perform a transaction and remember in the gate it has to the destination type is only receiving it is not a inventory actually we cannot even modify it if you have the rcv receipt override profile set yes what happens you will have the facility of overriding the destination you can even send to the inventory direct if the consignment is to be urgently done what happens you can even send it to the otherwise what happens you going there they go there and then here what happens everything is not coming fine you have to give the location location is important fine so when you perform a thing what happens the location of the supplementary column or other the inventory fine what is it is one m1 staple manufacturer so we go there and give location the manager one so once when you save it what happens the system will not commit the transaction you cannot see it. the please enter gl rate fine again what happens when you want to perform a, a receipt in the gate what happens the gl date the inventory period and then the control purchasing periods all must be open fine then only what happens it will not perform the receipt in the gate fine it is not doing it so let us go and then open all the periods now we want to commit no <clears throat> go there so let us now switch response to the gl and then here what happens we are not going to open all the periods go there generally the rational operations and then here what happens you know see whether the gl is open or not you know how to open it now and then afterwards what happens you know come back and then see the purchasing period also so we will now go to the gl and then here what happens we are now going to open the period of gl now so it is set up open close the navigation in gl so in which what happens we will now perform and then we will now make a check whether everything is open or not and then once when it is opened we will now go and then check the control purchasing period in purchasing now so i have no switching responsibility is not taking long time fine go there go to the setups and then go to open close now fine set up open close the navigation double click on it and then here i will not click on find now it will not show me the thing <clears throat> so click on find it is not showing me here what happens you know see that what happens october is open november is not open at all fine. let me open up to october fine number fine click on open target period so click on this is november n o v iphone 17 and then you tap and then click on open period now for sure open the target period click on yes so november will be open now okay no no so the concurrent will be running for opening the period now the concurrent will be running for opening the period so once when the period is now completed what happens it now it will not be open now and open period is not pending standard and then close it now and now what happens we go there you go to the purchasing responsibility you go to the purchasing responsibility and then open the control purchasing period and go to the setups and then go to the financials and then go to the accounting and then go to the control purchasing period now and go to the purchasing period. so the navigation set up financials accounting control purchasing period the navigation which what happens you go to open the purchasing period and double click on it you go to open it up now so it's a web enabled form in which what happens you have to open the november period now so we can open it up we can even open the independent individual periods now basically in fusion what happens we don't have any periods for purchasing we don't have any periods for inventory bindas as soon as you perform the setup you can start to perform the transactions they are nicely done because period opening and closing are basically a financial act it is a little related finance so what happens they in the supply chain we don't have any periods at all they have simplified the process 
what happens you love it actually so in fact what happens uh, many of my students who are now uh, got trained from by me on fusion they will not say we will never go back to ebay sir it's a really very cumbersome actually <laughs> so that way you know coming back go there you know query now but november iphone 70 and click on go now let me query it now so november is basically never open and drop it down and then make it as open and then save so november is not saved so we have not saved it fine so a message has come now and then we will now go on and see on the inventory also fine close it let us go back to inventory now fine <clears throat> what else okay i'll now close it and now <clears throat> Then we'll go to the inventory now. Find go there. Such responsibility. And then go back to inventory. <coughs> so I'll now go there. Go to accounting close cycle inventory accounting periods for the M1 R for the destination R. We will make a check around. Go the M1 inventory. So here, what happens? You cannot see this. What happens? Number is already open. So the GL period, the inventory period, and then the control purchasing period all are open. Now what happens? We can very well perform a gate result. Go to purchasing. I, you know, I mean, inventory itself fine, doesn't matter. So in the inventory itself, what happens? We go there and then perform this. So here, what happens? We go to transactions and then go to inter transfers now. Why not inter? Sorry, receiving receipts. Now. So we are now going to make a result of this now. Fine, go there. So inter receipts. Now. Go for M1 or go there. And then query is now fine. NA percentage and then give a tab. And then click on find now. And then close it. It will now close perfectly. And then select it. And then here, what happens? We are now given this destination location is what? M1 Seattle manufacturer. And then commit. So upon commit, what happens? The transaction will be committed. Cannot say the transaction is committed. Now RTP will run now. Any activity on the receiving side will be followed by an RTP concurrent. So once when the RTP concurrent, what happens? The system will be updating the activity. So as of now, what happens? We are now crossing only the gate now. So the system will not show the stock at all here. The stock will not be shown here because it's now only crossed the gate now. And go there. So it's not running. So wait for the RTP to complete. When RTP is now completed. The pay on receipt is now running. Is a dummy run actually fine? There is no such pay on receipt here. It's a dummy run, so it runs over here now. I close it now, and then note down the header. Click on the header and then note down the GR number. So future references must be on the GR number. Fine, close it now. No done. Close it now. What happens? You go there and then have a look at the stock now. Fine, go to online availability, online quantity. Now I am already in M1. No need to change it all. Fine, put the item over here now. I see. Go there. B1 percentage, IOT percentage, and you tap. So IOT in transit and go there. Click on find. It is push. Nothing is there as such. I know, no, no one is there. I know there. So you go there. And now what happens? You cannot see the transaction. You go to the transactions. And then here what happens? View material transaction. Good transactions. And then go to the receiving. <clears throat> and then here what happens? You cannot view the receiving transaction. So go and then view the receiving transaction. Double click on it. And then query on your GRN number now. And paste it over here. And then query. It will not show the transaction. Values. Here what happens? It will not show you the things which is available now. And go there. Click on the transaction. What happens? It is now received. It is now received in the gate and then it has been sent to the receiving section. Now we have to deliver it now. Only upon delivery, what happens? It will be visible now over there and go there. So on this one, what happens? We have to see this now. <coughs> Sorry. I'll close this one. Go there. And then the other one. So once when you deliver it, what happens? It will be visible now. So in this one, in this section, what happens? You'll not make a physical inspection where everything is okay or not. Fine. We'll not do it. We'll not do the delivery. And go there. And then close it now. And then we'll now open up now. Fine. Let us say one quantity is now damaged out of 10. You go there and then here you go to this place, you go to transactions, you go to receiving, and then you go to what? Uh, receiving transactions. This is a delivery area. The receiving section, actually. In the receiving section, you are now going to perform a receiving transaction by entering, and then you will now perform a receiving transaction here. Click on it. And then we will now query on the GRN number. Now. On the, on the GRN number, you are going to put. The moment you put the GRN number, the shipment number is coming automatically, the interrupt shipment is also coming automatically. And click on find now. And then you find that out of 10, one is now damaged. So you select it and then make it as nine. Make it as nine and then go there. And then here, what happens? You go do it. And then here, the sub inventory which is misspecified on the on the transaction form on the on the source line is not coming out automatically. But if you feel that there is no there is no space at all, we can override this. Find control L and then you can say are are yahan par rakh nahi sakta saman because it's already full. So what happens? You can override the recommendation of the source organizations, the destination sub inventory, and then you can put anything wherever you want. And go there. And then you can and then commit. Remember, it has to be an asset submitted. That's the only thing which you have to take care of now. Fine, what The FGA there. Fine, control is commit. Fine, what else? So it is not transacted. Fine, what happens? Now, then? now what happens again? RTP will run now. So upon successful completion of the RTP, what happens? You cannot see the stock getting updated now. Fine, go there. It is not running. So wait for the RTP to complete. So once the RTP is complete, close it. And then what happens? You go there. View receiving transactions for the GRN number now. Go there. Paste it over here now. And then give it a and then find it out. And then here, what happens? You go to the transaction lines. Here, what happens? You know, see, it's also delivered. 
So nine will be visible as a stock. Fine, go there, close it, close it. And now what happens? Go and then see this on-hand quantity. On-hand availability, on-hand quantity. And then have a look at it now, fine, for this item. Fine. It is what? B1 percentage. IoT percentage. And then you tap. And then find it out. Go on. Now we'll have nine stock. Stock will be nine. Though. The one which is now remaining on the on the receiving section, we have to make a reverse IoT. Find one more IoT, you have to make it and then do it now. And then remember in the shipping method, if you go on and see now, fine. Go, there, go to SOS down down, enter it. Here if you want it for hours. If you don't have any shipping network on the reverse direction, it will not allow at all. So here what happens if you see there will be plenty now, fine. Uh, and then I'll now query for the what happens? The two is B11 now. It will not show plenty of organizations over here now. Fine. Let me query the two organization is what? Rather, uh, uh, I will not say from organization. I will not make a change now. Fine. Uh, as what? From organization. And then I will not check it as what? B11. Sorry. I will not exit out of it now. So here, what I will not say? B11. And then give it a tap. From and two. Fine. Organization on this one. You are seeing it now. What happens over there? So B11 to M1, we have it. Similarly, M1 to B11 also must have an entry. If you don't have an entry on M1 to B11 as a shipping network, what happens? We cannot perform a reverse IoT. So, what happens? IOT is unidirectional. It is not bidirectional. Fine. For each and every direction, we have to define the shipping networks. If shipping networks are not defined for each and every direction, what happens? It will not fail. It will not work at all. So this completes the basic IOT. Now we'll now go for a complex IOT. Fine. This is now being practiced in many companies now. Fine. Complex IOT is the one where what happens? We'll be having lots of things. So you have one IOT exercise. <clears throat> Interog exercise. So we have one interog exercise on day three. Fine, double click on it. So we are going to see a complex IOT over there now. Double click on it. So let us go and see. So now what happens? I am not going to create an item. Fine, let me create an item. So what happens? I will not create an item. Uh, uh, we will now have what happens? SLR enabled actually. So create two inventory options. No, no, uh, one question here, Harun. So uh, we received nine quantity out of ten. So yeah. one you said that we have to send via IoT only. Yeah, yeah, IoT. Okay, so if you are sending uh, via IoT, so it will reduce from the nine or it will take one. How? It, it will, will only take one now. Right? You have to sell it only. I think. Oh God, it's a good question. <laughs> whether no, from the sub inventory, whether uh, yeah, it will go, it will reduce the finished goods sub inventory, or because this one quantity didn't come to sub inventory at all, right? right. It will not go only from sub inventory. Thing. So, in that case, what happens is the one also you have to deliver it to the inventory, and then afterwards only to perform IoT. Thing. I'm not sure about okay. it. Can I do what happens IoT from the receiving section itself? Can you send it or not? I'm not sure about it. And just make a check of it when I'm because I'm not aware of it. And it's a good question, but I'm not aware of it. Just make a check whether I, if it allows it's go okay. Because otherwise, what happens is we have to another way deliver it to the, what happens the inventory, and then afterwards you have to perform it. Because even you see, as far as supplier is concerned, we can very well send it back from the receiving section to the supplier. Receiving section to supplier is a correct way, not from the inventory. Because the receiving section will be having the packing facilities basically. So we can send from inventory as well as the receiving section. So what happens? But whenever you are returning back, it is always preferable to send from the receiving section. Because inventory is just a stocking area, whereas the receiving section will be having what happens facility to even pack. So ideally speaking, what happens? We just go from receiving section only. I'm not sure about how uh, the system has been configured for this. I know that good, good question, but again, what happens? We make a, uh, a reverse IoT and then make a check. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Next is what the intro transfers, uh, complex intro transfers. So in this case, what happens? Uh, I, I am now I'm not going to create a two inventory org. I'm going to keep it as such. And then create sub inventories and then open the accounting periods. I'm going to use the existing ones. I'm not going to create an item with a SLR control. SLR stands for serial lot and revision. So let me create an item which is having SLR control. Fine. Locator control is normally not considered the item level at all. So we normally ignore the locator control. So we go there and then we will now create a SLR control. Fine. Go there. SLR. So I will now change the organization to what? My source organization B11. B11. Go there. Let me create an item on this page. Go there. Go to the items. Fine. Go there. Go to the master. So I will now create a complex cycle. You know. <clears throat> It is B11 underscore complex IoT. So it's a complex IoT test actually. And go there and then apply the template. The button template is applied. So once when you apply the template, what happens? It goes over there. 
and then afterwards what happens uh, nothing to be done on the item as it's going to go there and say so we had to enable the SLR and go to the inventory and then what happens serial generation and making it as addressable so that what happens we can manually iterate the numbers lot numbers is full control and then revision control is enabled revision control is enabled and go to the control is connected it orders <coughs> and then before assign it what happens I know make a change of the what happens start number for the destination organization right over there so I will now make a change of this line, close it now, and then change the organization to serial manufacturing. And then I will now start, make a change of the state, start of the system. You go there, collapse all, a SOP, and then enter in, and then control it, and then what happens, you go there, entering in. And then here, you go to the revision lot, let me make it a C now. Right. C is a start number, I just want to understand you guys. So the start revision number of this is Z, and then I will now go there, and then assign the item to the R now, and go there. I will now assign the item to the R, and go there. So here, what happens, the master item is there. Go there. So it is already uh, having a C now. Right? Change the organization is B11 now. Go there. And now what happens? You go there and then query my item now. You go to items and then go to master items and then let me query. Query the item and go there. Now what happens? You go to tools, organization assignment. Let me assign it to both the arms. B11 commit and then let me query M1 also and go there. Query M1 and then assign it. So the item is assigned to both the arms. Remember, all the controls are enabled now. All the controls are enabled. So after assigning it, what happens? What I'm going to do is I will now remove the controls. I will now go and remove the controls. So you go there, the interview says, assign it to both arcs. Change the working arc to work. And then remove the SLR controls. Fine. We are going to remove all the SLR controls. Fine. In the organization form, not in the master form now. In the organization form, I'm going to remove all the controls. All the controls will be removed. And go there. So let us go there. And then start to work on this arc. Fine. We are already working on this arc. Okay, it doesn't matter. Be one. And then go to items, organization items, and then query the item. Go there, go to items, organization. Remember, do not make any change on the master because what happens? All are OCS. Majority of the attributes on the inventory are OCS, and so what happens? You're not supposed to make a change on the master because they will not be reflecting on your transactions specifically. So go to the organization items. Items, organization items, the navigation where what happens? You're going to query the item. Go there, keep it have and query it. And then here, I go to the inventory and then remove all the controls. Fine, no control. Fine. Full control is now remote. Fine. You know, go there. They don't give you a warning, doesn't matter. I go there and then work. This is a very famous example, and then many companies are facing this problem actually. Or rather, this issue. Rather, this is not an issue actually, it is how they practice basically. Fine. So, what happens in the source organization B11? I don't have any control at all. Fine. I don't have any control at all. No control is there. In destination, all the three controls are enabled. Fine. Locator control is normally not considered an item level, only at the sub level is considered. So the source has got no control, the destination has got all the controls now. Fine, go there. Now, what I'm going to do is, I will go there. I will not see this now. Fine, go there. This place, what happens? I will not, what happens? Receive 1000 quantities first of all. Fine. It will not ask any control at all because the source organization does not have anything. And so, what happens? If you go to the transactions and perform the miscellaneous transaction, so no controls will be asked for it because it's not having any control. Fine, go there. It's M percentage RE, miscellaneous receipt to the one. Go there. And then populate the account and then go to the transaction lines. And then here, what happens? COMP percentage and then you attack. It's a complex item, fine, go there. Sub inventory is what? The first sub inventory, go there. And then go for 1000 quantities. So the controls are not enabled in the bottom, you can see. Fine. Even the revision control is not there. The serial lot is also not there because item has been removed all the controls. So 1000 quantities will now be received on the source organization B11 without any controls. Fine. Close it now. So if you go there and then have a look at the transactions and then go to on and availability, on and quantity, and then query for it, you will now have the stock without any controls. So the stock is now shown over here as 1000. So 1000 is there. So we don't have any controls at all. Now, you establish the shipping network as direct. You want to move from the first stock to the second org as well as a direct organization transfer. So you go there. You go, you go there. Collapse all. Yes, oh, yes. Down, down, enter. And then here, what happens? You click on this. And then make a change to what? You are now making a change to direct. Make a change to direct and then commit. Now, what happens? We cannot transfer this item at all. We cannot transfer this item. Fine. So to transfer the item, what happens? The controls has to match it. The controls has to match. Items controls has to match in the source and destination. If there is a mismatch, what happens? In the mismatch also, it will allow certain conditions. I will now come to the debit later. Fine. Go there. I will now go to transactions and then I go to our interlock transfers. And then click on the two or what happens? You'll be able to see the M M1 over here. Entering. The type is what this thing. And then I'll now go there as a direct one. Click on the transaction lines. Here, what I was percentage COMP percentage, and then give it app. Poda Ponga. It will not allow it at all. We have an item. It has been assigned to both the arcs. Fine. And then we even have a stock. Fine. 
it will not allow you at all because what happened there is a control mismatch so when you have a control mismatch we cannot perform a direct organization transfer at all fine it is not possible at all fine can do it close it close it and then we have to have the shipping network as only in transit in transit is the only way by which what happens everything now and go there so you go to sos down down and then change the network to in transit so if mismatching is going to have take place what happens if you go only for in transit fine direct organization transfers what happens where a, a certain mismatches it will not allow some mismatches it will allow but for certain mismatches it will not allow fine go there come it you know see that later, a bit later on. so i know change it now the item will now appear on the transaction line fine go there come go there now what happens the item will be appearing you go to transactions and then go to intra transfers and then here what happens you go there control l and then choose the m1 or o here now the type is on oh, right fine i'll now put the number over here now 1 2 3 4 and then click on the transaction lines and then here what happens percentage comp percentage and then say g boom bar and then give a tap item will appear so previously item was not appearing now the moment you make a change to in transit what happens the item is appearing and go there i'll now pop the first transaction now go there the two sub inventory if you want you can pop it is not a mandatory field now fine so what happens again and override the destination level fine go there give a tap and then i'm now say 15 quantities i'm transacting it and go there reason and then reference i can even put my employee number as a reference added value is 12 and go there and then if you go and then give a transportation cost the account becomes a mandatory now and go there now what happens we can very well commit so if you see what happens this much of a quantity is now moving from this place 15 quantities without any control without any control what happens it now started moving towards the destination or find what and commit and then close it and remember the destination organization has got all the controls actually and change the organization change the organization to destination organization it's m1 now it has got all the controls but gate will never check whether what happens it is now coming with the controls or not fine gate will allow you simply fine go there go to the transactions and then go to the receiving and then here go to the receipts gate receipts i'm going to make it for 1 2 3 4 5 fine here go there we'll now make it so 1 2 3 4 5 is a one i'm now going to make it and gate will not check fine it'll not build us so again fine chalo andar chalo it will not even stop you anything at the gate all fine select it and then select the item fine go there and then come it fine the location is a mandatory fine and the m1 sale manufacturing fine go there and come it fine go there it will now coolly go transaction is complete and then rtp will come so once when the rtp is completed we can even see the transaction is now getting completed fine no problem at all fine so because what happens gate will never check the items uh, what happens uh, controls at all but when you want to deliver it then what happens it will be making a check now fine go there now you can go and then view receiving transaction i have not uh, Identify the shipment number. Let me query one, two, three, four, five. Fine, go there. And then if you click on find, what happens? You now see a uh, uh, receipt is now made. So the received transaction is now successfully performed, but deliver will not be performed at all. Before delivering it, what happens? It will now check whether all the controls which are enabled on the destination or whether it is on on the incoming item or not. Fine. If it is not there, it will not allow. Fine, go there. Click on it. And then here, what happens? You go there. And then you go to the deliver transactions. This is the receiving transaction. So double click on the receiving transaction and then here what happens? You go do it now. Fine, go there. So click on this shipment number again. I have now forgotten to note down the GRN number now. Fine, go there. So this is the GRN number. Fine, go there. Click on the find now. Now you select it and then try to commit. Hey, hey, it will not say. Come on, come on. This is error. The lot is not there. The serial is not there. Revision at least what happens? It has not taken up the organization start revision. Organization start revision is not getting populated. But another way you specify the lot serial number. What happens? It will not allow you to log. So you click on the lot serial button at the bottom. What happens? You know, provide the lots. So I am not going to generate a lot. The lot number is generated. I go there. Go for fifteen quantities. And then if you give it done, and come on, yeah, you are not given the serial number. The item is now serial control also. So we need to give the serial number also. Please enter the serial numbers. I go there. Click on serial numbers. And then since it is a what happens? A trip control. You can even manually enter the numbers. Had it been predefined, what happens? We had to only generate the numbers and then keep it ready and then do it. Fine. Now what happens? That's it. Fine. Click on done now. And then here what happens? You go there. and then click on done <clears throat> and then commit so by this what happens the transaction is now getting completed and fine <clears throat> go there is not completed we close it again rtp will run now fine wait for the rtp to complete so once it is completed what happens you can now see the receiving transaction delivery is also performed so before delivery what happens it will now first of all check fine it will now first of all check then go there and see is not so so once when it is completed what happens not running we close it and go there and then go to the view receiving transaction summary on the grn number now paste it over here and then find it out now what happens i click on the transactions you now see the delivery is also so 15 is not delivered so if you go on and see the stock it will be showing you fine here what happens you now see the this thing also the serial lot number also so fine go there query for it and then i will now say percentage comp percentage and then give a tap and then find it out we can now see the serial lot number of these items go there on and 
This happens in many companies now. There is a mismatch on the controls on the source and destination organization. In such a cases, what happens? We have the revision number also here now, as C. Revision number is C. This is a lot number, and then these are all the serial numbers. So whenever such a mismatch happens, what happens? We have to establish the shipping network only as in transit. So then what happens? Before delivery, it will now ensure if it is not there. We have to create the numbers and then bring it in. So that is why what happens? You read, you read this paper now. Fine. You go there and then read this. The complete things are written down here. I have not done it very fast now. Like a zoom, I have gone there. So there are two examination questions that are written now. Fine. Explain why you have failed on the intra transfers or direct shipping. Because in a direct shipping, what happens? There's a first question, and then there's a second question. Justify why the receiving transaction is thrown in error. Right? Uh, after succeeding and making a result, right? the, the gate receipt is not made, afterwards, this is not thrown in error. So if you have passed both the things, one Priya will now give an increment to all of you. What happens? Don't go to the next page. The results the answers are written there. Right? Go there, you order us. So here, what happens? It says what? Uh, uh, activated in the source, and then activated in the destination is there. Serial lot revision. No, no, no. Destination, yes, 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 what happens? It will not go at all. Fine. Item will not populate at all. Item will not even populate if you're going to have a. a, a so, here what happens? I have another combination of yes, no, yes. Here it is no, yes, no. Fine. Fine. Again, item will not populate. That means what? Whichever is on in the destination must be on in the source. If the destination is having no control, fine, doesn't matter. The source is having yes or no, it is immaterial. But if the destination, if it is yes, it must be yes on the source also. Then only what happens on a direct organization, it will not populate. Otherwise, what happens, it will not populate all and go there. So, whereas in this case, you can see no, no, yes. Here, no, yes, yes, it will definitely go. Because this is yes, and this is also yes. So, in such cases, what happens, we can even go for a direct organization transfers. So, whichever is on on the destination must be on on the source for performing a direct organization transfers. Final loss. So, item will populate all the transactions. The only control, <coughs> revision, match in the source. Final loss. So that is the reason that it was not going fine. If, if you have such a conditionality, we can even go for a mismatch for a, for a direct organization transfers. And then here, what happens? The receiving transactions, you can read it now fine. What happens? Uh, gate is not going to make a check of it because of which what happens? You're not getting it now fine. Go there and then over there. And then what happens afterwards? <clears throat> what happens if you go on and see this now? So on the receiving transaction, you're not populating the numbers based upon which all those things are there. Now read all the blah blahs. Fine. So this completes the interlog exercise, both the simple one as well as the complex one. And many places this happens. There is a control mismatch between the source and destination. Because of which what happens, they always go for an in-transit. They always go for an in-transit. There are certain cases, certain industries which are following like that. Right? So by which what happens, you will have to see whether what happens, whichever controls is not missing, that you can generate and then do it. When you're transferring it from a full control organization to a no control organization, what happens? The control numbers are lost. The serial numbers are lost. The lot numbers are lost. The revision numbers are lost. Right. So it will not go as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a total one, as a pack only, basically, as a blind box. And then everything is lost. And then what happens? When you make a reverse transfer, what happens? You only have to generate again. The numbers which are not transferred to the organization, which are not having any controls, the controls gets lost. The, the numbers gets lost. And then you only have to generate a number. The numbers are getting generated again. So this is on interlock transfers. Now go back. We put up the, our agenda, fine, inventory agenda. I'm opening it up now. So we have completed the basics now. Fine, the controls have been completed. The material transfers have been completed. So we have completed the material transfers. Now we go for the first replenishment technique. There are five techniques that are available here. Yeah. So Nana, one question on the material transfers. Okay, yeah. So in many of the forms, we are seeing that a serial triggered and LPN triggered checkbox. And what is the purpose of that one? Yeah, actually, you see, what happens? It is not. It is like a what's called mundri kote in the market. You go there, close it now. So if you go there and then what happens? You go to transactions and go to miscellaneous transaction. Fine. If I put the tick mark on serial triggered and then afterwards you put this now, fine. M percentage RE entering. Now what happens, that becomes the first, uh, what happens, click on the transaction lines here, what happens, you know, see, the serial number comes in as a first entry. Just like a, as a, as a cashier network, it will be protruding outside, fine, that is the first number. So if this is not applicable for you, you don't put it, fine, go there. And then in the LPN triggered organization, what happens, LPN will be the first number which has to enter. So the first number you have to enter is a serial number. 
and then if the item is not going to be sale control what happens not rather not find go there p11 uh, percentage and then you tap i will not find out the serial number not find i mean the what uh, uh, which or uh, which is the serial number control yeah i forgot in the count item one item two maybe i'm not sure about it we'll go there then the case order will also become i think uh, a yeah, mandatory field i'm not sure about it go there so that is i mean m1 that is the reason what i was not showing you can go, go collapse or can go they close it i will now go to b1 now and change the organization to b1 now change the organization to b1 b11 or go there and then here what i was they go to the transactions and miscellaneous transaction and then i will not put the right as what m percentage re sorry m percentage re go there this can count and then enable the sale trigger and go there and then i will not try to put the item over here which is not serial control and go there uh so 25 items on b1 uh, which one is a sub registration test mca one which is a serial control item <laughs> i think monitor the monitor is a serial control item and go there so monitor is a serial control item. again it is not becoming mandatory here to control your <coughs> percentage <coughs> so serial number is not becoming mandatory so if you have already generated something what happens you can even assign it to the transaction the only advantage is that what up is becoming as a first entry that's all the thing is apart from that we don't have any what about serial triggered the form has got any real meaning on this similarly lpn triggered right? so in the warehouse management what happens if you're going to have a lpn the lpn number has to be done during visits and then during put away also so that number will be populating you for this thing oh god is not showing me all the numbers not only this one <laughs> you can choose this number and then afterwards you can go ahead and do it so no real significance on this serial triggered as well as last trigger we can even enter inside also go there now there are five replenishment techniques so whenever the inventory stocks go down what happens these replenishment techniques will now what happens will now move the material from some other place into this place so we will now have one sub inventory in which what happens we will now uh, what happens um, move the material from that what happens from the main sub inventory into the sub inventory so now we are going to create what happens a sub inventory for min max plan so let me create a min max sub inventory and then what happens i have to maintain a stock especially what happens when sub inventories are very near to the shop floor what happens they will not be having much of a space with them so there will be a space constraint where the sub inventories are very near to the shop floor so in which case what happens you will not keep a stock <coughs> between two levels <coughs> sorry <coughs> between two levels you will not keep a stock and then whenever the stock level goes below <coughs> you will not be moving it from the main stores so main stores will be having 10000 quantities of it whereas what happens the sub inventory which is near to the shop floor will be having space restrictions because of which what happens it will not be having sufficient quantity so we go there and then we will not create a sub inventory over here you go to s o s enter control of floor i will not create a sub inventory now i go there i will not create a sub inventory for emm sub down arrow and then here what happens i now have a main sub inventory also the main sub inventory is the one where what happens we are now going to make a purchase order sub mm sub inventory is a one which is very near to the shop floor and so what happens because of space constraints we can only keep from maximum of around 50 quantities so we cannot keep up, up to say around 50 quantities we are going to keep it on space now so now this sub inventory we are going to maintain the min max plan so whenever the stock level goes below 10 and then this sub inventory is now feeding the manufacturing area and so what happens it has to be immediately replenished you bring the item from me that is what we say we bring the item whenever the stock level goes below whatever we are going to make it now fine go there so we will now go on then what happens specify this now fine we'll now, let's go on then create item now fine go there close it now you go to windows and go to what you go there go to items and then get an item now so i am now going to get an item fine what happens min max test item so i am now getting a min max test item fine go there it's a min max test and then here what happens you go there and then apply item play fine go there purchase interpret is not there go there and then simply commit fine you are now applied at a plate and then commit it and then you are about you are assigning to the organization p11 so we are assigning to the r so the assignment of the r is not complete fine go there it is now assigned to b11 r fine 
Now, <coughs> what happens? You go there. You close it now. Now, what happens? I will now open the supplementary and then I am going to specify the parameters, min max parameters. I am going to specify. Yes, oh yes, enter. And then control of and retrieve it. And then keep your cursor on the min max sum. MM sub. And then here I will now click on the item supplementary. Item supplementary is considered as a restriction now. Fine. Here we are going to restrict the item. Fine. Go there. Item supplementary is considered as a restriction. Here what I must say it is what uh, a min max item. Fine. Go there. Min percentage. And get that. What are the item? No, no, no. Go there. Percentage. MM percentage. Enter. Yeah. It is the MM test item. I will now enable it for min max. So this item I'm going to enable for more than and this sub unit is having some restriction on space fine. What happens? The minimum quantity which you are going to keep is 10. Whenever it goes below 10, what happens? We have to trigger a replenishment. The maximum I can keep it is 10, 50. So what happens? This is a constraint. Fine. Such sub inventories are replenished from the main sub inventory whenever the stock levels goes below, below this. And then I go to the order modifiers. Here what happens? Whenever I ask for one, what happens? The main sub inventory is going to bundle it into five. Fine. Five pieces are bundled together and then now giving it. So I will now say fixed lot multiple is five. So here what happens in inventory, it is always what happens, it will uh, what happens, uh, go for approximation. Approximation is always a ceiling routing. In a ceiling routing, what happens when you ask for one, it will now be given five. When you ask for six, you will now get ten. When you ask for six, you won't get five, you will get ten. So middle management always goes for a ceiling routing and not for the floor rounding. So on a floor rounding, what happens if you go there six, what happens it will be rounded to five. On a ceiling rounding, six will be taken to ten. So metal management will always do that. What happens? Ceiling rounding. And then what happens? I am now having a trolley. In the trolley, what happens? Whenever I move, I long say what happens? The minimum quantity you have to keep on a trolley is twenty. Otherwise, what happens? The carrying cost of the trolley will now become more than the item's cost. So this is called minimum order quantity. So there are so many empirical formulas available for calculating the minimum order quantity. So many statistical formulas for invoking. If you refer the inventory documentation, what happens? Chakkara Fine. That much of information is there on the MOQ. MOQ can be calculated with so many things by, by your inventory stocking. Right? There is a concept called inventory turnaround. So based upon the inventory turnaround, what happens? You can now decide how much must be the minimum order quantity which has to be kept on a trolley for a moment. Fine. <clears throat> So there is a, in a very advanced level basically. So when you go into such advanced level, what happens? You have to calculate MOQ, minimum order quantity. Maximum, okay, man, maximum is not uh, that you have to ask him, fine, but minimum has got plenty of calculations. Basically. You can arrive at the MOQ based upon certain empirical formulas. Statistical formulas are used for arriving at the MOQ. Fine. So this figure and this figure are given by the inventory people. This, if required, we can even, if the inventory is so perfect, what happens? They even have derived the value of MOQ and then populate us. And then go to the sourcing. And here, what happens? We can now, whenever the stock is now less than 10, whenever the stock is less than 10, what happens? You go to the sourcing. We can bring it from another sub inventory or we can bring it from another inventory or through IRISO. Right? Remember, when you're going a sourcing as inventory, we can bring it only through IRISO route and not IOT route. Right? IOT route is not an automatic route. Right? IOT is a manual route, whereas IRISO is an automatic route. So, what happens? We can even bring it via IRISO. Even though, let us say, we are not paying any taxes to the government, and then what happens? You know, same excise region. System-wise, what happens? Only IRISO is the only route by which what happens? We can now bring the material from another country, or otherwise you can even go to supplier also. Fine, you can even buy the item whenever the stock levels are no less than ten. Fine, go there. If it's less than ten, what happens? We can even buy the item. So now, what happens in this excise to begin with? I'm not going to go for the sub inventory. And then what happens? The picking rule will now decide from which sub inventory you have to pick now. Then I have no have to go to have main now. If you have multiple mains, and then what happens? You will now have a yeah, move order getting created. The move order will now allocate the source. The source sub unit is getting allocated. But if you say you want to bring it only from main, if you populate main, what happens? This will now supersede the allocation. So in this case, what happens? If I am putting some boundary, it will now supersede the allocation and then bring it only from this place. If you leave it blank, what happens? The system's picking rule will now pick up from the appropriate sub unit as far as source is concerned. Right. Apart from this mentioned sub inventory, it will now pool all other sub inventories together and then the picking rule will be applied upon. Right. So you must be very careful upon this now. If you feel that it is now going to bring it from what are they, I am now having a production unit one here. It, if uh, by chance what happens, if you are going to bring it from production unit two, that is not correct. So if that is the case, what happens, you populate main over here. So if you want to bring only from main, what happens, you can put it over here. It will now supersede the allocation. The lead times is again a big topic, will be coming to it a bit later. And then the manufacturing will not have a look at the lead time. So we are now specified the min max parameter. 
on the what happens on the move orders i forgot to tell you one thing fine every item will be covered by a move order fine go there go to the window and go to the window go to the go there go to setups and then go to rules and then go to picking now so here what happens uh, you will normally be what happens uh, creating what happens uh, multiple picking rules for multiple items depending upon the requirement so you'll be having it and then in the assignment what happens is assigned multiple items also so the assignment what happens you must see multiple items getting assigned and then if in case what happens if an item is not having an assignment in any of the picking rules what happens the default picking rule will be applied for it if an item is not assigned to any picking rule what happens you go there go to the navigation and then here what happens you know find a default picking rule go to sop enter and go there here what happens we are we'll be having a default picking rule go to this place and then you go to the atp picking rule and you will be having an absolute lost in first out whichever has come from manufacturing as the latest one that will always be shipped to the customers the absolute lost in first out is the default picking rule and that will be allotted and that will be used for allocation right so you'll be having one such thing on the organization parameter you'll be using it and companies will know where they may have any type of a picking rule as a default picking rule depending upon the requirement otherwise by default what happens this is the uh, default picking rule if an item is not covered by a picking rule it is an absolute loss in first out whichever has come latest from the okay because the concept is what we have to whatever has been manufactured latest has to be given to the customer so so absolute loss in first out So you go there, and then here, you close it, and then go to the window, and then go to the sub window. So now here, what happens? We now give the parameters as what ten fifty, and then here, what happens? Five twenty and forty. Fine. So these are the five min max parameters. Fine. Go there. Five ten fifty, and then five twenty and forty. So go there, and now what happens? We open up one more document now. Here, what happens? We go to the min max planning report. You go to day three. Fine. Min max planning. Min max method. and double click on min max method is the one so here min max method is the document here what happens you have the minimum quantity you have the maximum quantity you have the fixed lot multiple you have the minimum order quantity and then we have the maximum order quantity and so on now whenever you perform a report fine let us now you know keep nine quantities on the sub inventory and then i will now keep some thousand quantities on the main sub inventory so let me go there and then to keep the simulate the stock now fine nine quantities on the sub inventory and then thousand on the main now fine And remember, my parameters are ten comma fifty. Fine, let's close it now. Close it. Close it. Right, come on, close it. Fine, let's go there. And then here, what happens? We go to the transactions. And then I will now perform a miscellaneous transaction now. In this place, what happens? Click on it. And then M percentage R E. Give it a enter. Miscellaneous result. Fine. Let me move on top. Go to transaction lines. Here, what happens? Percentage M M percentage. And then enter. The sub inventory is what uh, min uh, min max sub. Fine, go there. I will now keep nine over here now. And then down arrow, the same item. Shift F5 and then go there into the main sub inventory. What happens? I'm now going to keep thousand. So I'm now keeping thousand quantities in the main, and then in this one, what happens? I'm now going to I'm now simulating it to the nine quantities in this place. So when I run the min max planning report, what happens? It will now be less than nine, and so what happens? The min max planning report will be triggered now. In min max sub, what happens? I'm now going to have only a nine quantity. Fine, come let's commit. So we go there. It's not committed. Fine, close it now. And what happens? Okay. Now what happens? We go there and see this now. Fine. So in this paper, we go on and see this now. So nine. So the system, whenever you run the min max quantity, min max planning report, it does five such steps. Now. In five steps, it will not delay on this. There are five steps that are involved. So in the first step, when you run the min max planning, what happens? It will not calculate the available quantity. The available quantity is going to on hand quantity in the particular sub quantity plus the expected supplies. Let us say we have now made a purchase requisition. That is considered as supply. Your purchase order is considered as a supply. If you make another move order for moving it, there is a supply. And then IR ISO supplies are expected. Expected supplies. All the expected supplies will not contribute to the supply. You refer the user guide. It will tell you there are some seven or eight supplies are there. So it will now add all the supplies. Similarly, the demands will be subtracted. Let us say I already made a sales order; so it will be subtracted. We have another made another move order for moving it from some this place. Fine, that will be subtracted. Another IR is what? Fine, likewise, what happens? There are so many demands. So, it will now add all the supplies, expected supplies, and then expected demand, and then arrive at the available order. So, as of now, what happens? I have only on and up nine, and then no supplies, no no demands, and so what happens? The available order is nine. So, in step number two, what happens? It will now see calculate. Whether the min-max planning is required or not, you will not calculate the min-max or not. So diamond box, in which what happens? Your decision making will be done now. So we will now see whether AQ is less than minimum or not. If it is no, what happens? It will now exit the replenishment cycle. Okay, I don't want it here. Fine, it will now exit the replenishment cycle. If it is yes, fine. If the quantity is really what happens less than this, then it will now go to step number three. Now, if the available quantity is less than minimum, what happens? It will now go to step number three. 
So here what happens, I have now set as 50 now. So what happens, max minus available quantity is not calculated. In this case, what happens, 50 minus 40 by 9 is what, 41. Fine, 41 is not calculated. So step number three will now see what is the required quantity to replenish. Now what happens in step number four, it will now apply the FLM. If you ask for 41, since the main store is going to give a bundle of five, fine, every bundle is now given, what happens? The 41 will be getting approximated to 45 because of what ceiling rounding. The ceiling rounding, which is a min max plan, min uh, middle management rounding, which is a ceiling rounding, it is not a floor rounding or a not a nearest rounding. No nearest rounding and then no floor rounding. So the ceiling rounding has now rounded off the 45, 41 to 45 now. And step number five is a very complex step now. It will now calculate the reorder quantity. So the reorder quantity gets calculated in step number five. And it's a very complex step now. Fine. Here, what happens? There is one. Uh, on calculating it, what happens? It will now ensure that the step five is always less than or equal to step four. It will never exceed the 45 now. It should never exceed the 45, whatever is there. So here, what happens? There are some examples that I have given now. So if the minimum is 10 and then maximum is 50, and then the available quantity is 10, what happens? And the minimum order quantity and maximum order quantity is 20 and 40. We need 45. So what happens? The system will now recommend one trolley. One trolley of 40 because it's the maximum velocity. And then it will now recommend a second trolley also. If it recommends a second trolley, what happens? The minimum order quantity of the trolley is 20. So if you add it, what happens? 40 plus 20 is now 60. And so it is exceeding 45. So it will not recommend the second trolley at all. If its recommendation of the second trolley is there, and then if it is exceeding 45, it will not drop, and then it will not recommend only 40 for you. So what happens? There will be one line for one trolley. Later on, what happens? I'm going to make a modification. What happens? The 20 will be modified to 5. If it is 5, what happens? It can very well recommend two trolleys, one trolley of 40, and then another trolley of 5, and say, what happens? The output will be 45. So let us now simulate the first condition, and then see, and then after simulate the second one, and then see. So the first condition there. So here what happens, I will not run the min-max planning. The reorder quantity will be 40 now. Any doubt on this now? Fine. It's a very famous technique. And so what happens, this technique has to be understood very clearly. If you have any doubts, you can just ask me. Fine. This is a five-step process in which what happens, the reorder quantity is the ultimate one which has been calculated. It is a combination of what? The minimum, the minimum order quantity, and then the rather minimum capacity. The capacity of the trolley. And minimum capacity and the maximum capacity. So based upon this 20 and 40, what happens, this term will be calculated. So in this case, what happens? It will now give a recommendation of only 40 and not 45. You're going to see this now. Fine, go there. So let us go and then run it now. Fine. So we will now run the concurrent. Fine. Alt V R, Alt and Enter. Fine for the new concurrent. So I'm going to go for the new concurrent now. It is a min, and then I will now give a tag. It's min max planning report. So min max planning report is the one. So here, what happens? I'm now going to calculate what at the sub inventory level. Fine. Make it as a sub inventory level. Fine. Go on. Okay. And then I will now populate the sub inventory over here now. Fine. It is what mm sub one. On this, I'm going to calculate. So I will now check what happens. Items under minimum quantity, I'm going to make a report. Fine. The item selection got item under minimum quantity. And we have only one item which is now under the minimum quantity where item is a sub inventory restriction that has been specified now. In the item sub inventory restriction of the sub inventory, you have specified it. Fine. Click on OK and then click on submit. Now. I'm submitting it now. Go there. Click on no now. And then click on fine. The min max report is now running. So once when it is completed, what happens? It will now give output. Now. Fine. Alter. You now see the output of it now. So what happens, only one item is now below this level. It is a 10, we have a 9 there. So for which what happens, it will now give an output. So here, it cannot recommend two trolleys because what happens, 40 plus 20 is exceeding 45 now. So if you say 40 plus 20 is now exceeding 45, so it will now recommend only one trolley of output. Only one trolley of output. So it's now running. So once that is completed, we can now view the output of it. It's a very famous technique, and then what happens? Many of the replenishments take place only as a min max. As a min max, what happens? You have the replenishments taking place now. So it's now completed. Fine. Go and then view the output of it now. Fine. Click on the view output. We can now see the output of it now. Click on the view output. And then you can now see the output coming up. So you can now see the reorder quantity is now 40. So here, what happens? You can now see. The minimum quantity is 6, 50, 10, and then the maximum order is 50. The on hand quantity is 9, supply is 0, the demand is 0, available quantity is 9. So the minimum, uh, what happens, uh, you have the minimum and maximum. But then here, what happens, you cannot see that, uh, what happens, your uh, reorder quantity is now coming in two lines now. Let me reduce the size now. Go there, reduce the size. Now you can see the reorder quantity. So the reorder quantity is only 40. The reorder quantity is 40. Now, let me make a change of this minimum level from 20 to 5 and then run it now. 
I will not make a change. I will spend it by hand. Go there, close it. And then you go there. And then go to this place. Close it. And then open the sub inventory. Yes, for your center. And a control of one. I go there. I long go to the min max sub inventory. And then click on the item sub inventory. And then here I go to the order modifiers. And then make this 20 to 5. So the moment you make it as 5, what happens? These are all the levels. Fine, go there. So 5 and 40. So we need 45 now. Fine. But what happens? We can very well go for 2 on this because both of them put together is what happens is the condition is what? Step 5 must be less than or equal to step 4. Fine. So we can very well have a quantity. So the output will be 40 now. 45 now. You see, the output will be 45. You go there, run the min max again. You go there. There's Alt PR, Alt and Enter. And then min and then give a tap. Min max planning report. And then it is at the sub inventory level and drop it down. And then choose the sub inventory over here now. The sub inventory level. And then sub inventory is what? Min MM sub and go there. And then click on OK now. Pass on the parameters. Right? Now click on submit now. So the moment you submit it, what happens? It will not run. And then once when it is completed, what happens? You cannot see the output will be qualified. The output will be qualified. Go there. Then go there. And then click on the view output now. You can now see what happens. Go there and see. It's like here. You can now see. The reorder quantity is what if I know. There's a promise. Now, as of now, what happens? The system is now providing you what? Your report only. You only have to take an action manually for moving it now. This action of 5 and 45, what happens? You only have to take it. You have to ask the people to what? I don't do it now. But we can make it automatic also. So if you make the replenishment technique automatically, the system will be creating a move order for this case. The system will now create a move order. And so what happens? With the help of a move order, we can very well bring the items over here. So let us now make it automatically. So the system will be giving a move order output. For, for a sub-inventory level, what happens? The replenishments, it will be creating a move order. And then for an inventory level, what happens? It will be creating an internal requisition. And then for a supplier level, what happens? It will be creating a purchase requisition. So, there are all the three different outputs depending upon what type of a source you are going to use now. Right here, what happens? We close it. And then you can now see the source type. Right? The source? If it is a submitter level, what happens? The system will be creating more. If it is going to be a supplier, it will not create a purchase requisition. And then if it is going to be in inventory, it will be creating an internal requisition. Right? Of course, the appropriate setups for this model has to be done. Only when what happens is beginning it now. So sub inventory is now probably set right? go there. And then now when I am running the min max, I am now going to restock it now. So once when you ask the system to restock it, what happens? It will be creating the automatic replenishment outputs. So we go there and then we'll now run the concurrent again now. Min and then give it up. Then the min max plan report and go and run it now. Go there. So I will now drop it down and then choose this as a sub And then what happens? Min max up. And then here you go down. And then here what happens? You are having one command called what? Restock is going to know. If the restock is going to know what happens, the system will be creating everything manually only. <clears throat> we only have to take care of replenishments. So if you stick the resource, yes, the system gives a replenishment output automatically. Right? The replenishment output is now given automatically over here. Fine, automatically. Fine, click on OK. So click on OK. And then pass on this now. So the system will be giving an output. Fine, click on submit now. And then click on no now. Now what happens? It's not running it now. So once when the concurrent gets completed, what happens? You can now see the system output will be. <clears throat> what happens will be coming out now. But unfortunately, what happens is they have not put the move order number over here. Now. That is the newest way. Fine, go there. You click on the min max planning output. Fine, click on the view output. Here, what happens? It shows you everything. Fine. The same 45 is now going to come reorder on as 45. But it has now created a move order because what happens? The restocking, the parameters of this. What happens? We have a restocking here. Yes. If the restock is good, yes, the system will now create a what happens? A move order. The move order type is a replenishment move order. Previously, what happens is we have created a requisition move order manually. Now, what happens? It is a replenishment move orders. So, move orders are of, for of three types. Move orders are mainly meant for what happens <coughs> either the internal customers or external customers. When inventory is triggering, it will be a replenishment move order. When manufacturing is triggering, what happens? It will be a material pick. And then, when sales orders is not triggering, it, it will be a pick wave move order. So, replenishments, material pick, and then pick wave move orders are the three types of move orders which are available now. Now, what happens? The system will now create what? A move order of replenishment type. But here, what happens? We can even ask the technical team to put the move order number also somewhere. So, what happens? We will be able to understand it very clearly. So, that can be easily done. But the standard system does not show you the move order. 
Uh, Oracle's reports are mainly shabby. Always part of us. The technical team will be creating their own reports to meet the needs. Basically, close it now. This also you close it. Bang orders. Now you go there, and then now what happens? They now go to the move orders, and then I will open it. Go there, close it, close it. Go there. Now what happens? I will now go to the move orders, and then here what happens? I will now query the move order. Double click. So to query the move order, what happens? Uh, we don't have the number. We don't know the number. We don't know the status. Nothing is there. But what happens? We have the destination supplementary there. There is the only field which is queryable. So mm percentage. Let me query it now. One the bottom is not queryable. The header is only queryable. So what happens in the destination supplementary? We can put the supplementary name and then give a control F1. Give a control F1. And then here what happens? No show. No two lines. There are two lines are available. Forty and five. My orders. So these are the two transactions. The system has now created a more. The move order is the best route because what happens? It allocates the source with it. Source allocation is excellent. You know the source is absent here. What happens? It allocates the source based upon the picking rules. What happens? You have four different criteria of picking. So we can now see it's a pre-approved move order. The move order type is a replenishment. <clears throat> there is no need for any approval at all. The planner need not approve because what happens? It does not come from planning at all. Here, what happens? The replenishment technique is asking for a material, and so what happens? The seed is always goes to pre-approval. If it is via planning, then only what happens? The plan will be involved. Otherwise, what happens? Pre-approval. Take a copy of the more number. Close it. Now, what happens? I am now going to run the what happens again. All we are holding. I will now run it again. This time, what happens? You will not have any output at all. I can say. Go there. Go there. I will now make it as a supplementary now. So make it as a supplementary. I will not put the MM supplementary over here. Now find what happens. Here, what happens? I am not making the restocking will yes now. I will not making it. Let it keep it as it's not as a matter. Restocking is yes is not is now only going to give a move order output now. Find this case. Find it on okay. And then I will not submit it. There will not be any output at all. Find over there. And then see this one. All done. You will not see that there will be no output at all. So it has to be forty and five, but no output will be done. Over there, no output now. Go there. Fine. End of report. Can anybody tell me why the output has not come? It has not given output at all. Fine. Have a look at it now. The space. What happens? There is a problem here. It has not gone into third step at all. At the second step itself, what happens? It has exited. Anybody? Why it has exited on the second step? Now? Step number two. Without. Expected supply is there. Exactly. Arun has passed the test now. Fine. Fine. The expected supply forty plus five is now coming an expected supply, and so what happens? It will be added to OHQ. So now what happens? The available quantity is no more nine. What happens? This is fifty four now. So available quantity is now fifty nine, fifty four, and so naturally what happens? It will be not there. So many companies what they do is what happens? That forty five is uh, some three hours back. We need that forty five. So do not consider that forty five. So the expected supply. Please don't consider the forty-five because that is some three hours before we ask for it, and then they are ready to transact the move order. Fine, the move order is ready to be transacted. So when you are running it again, what happens? They will not consider the expected supply. That means move order supply they will not consider it. So what they will do is while you are running it, they will not hide it. And go there. So they will not hide it. Fine, go there. All we are all done. And go there. And then I will not run the min. And then give a tap. The min max planning report. I am running it. And then here what happens? I will not put the supplement level. Go there. Put the sub unit level, and then what happens? The MM sub. I'm going to put it now. So here, what happens? If you go down here, what happens? We can now say which demand sources and which supply sources should not be considered. Fine, go there. So if you go through the manual, it will not tell you what are your supply sources, what are your demand sources. Now what happens in the supply source? We have a move order as a supply. Let us not consider it. So include move order supply. <clears throat> include move order supply. I will not make it as no. If you have pushed it to the interface tables of purchasing for a final pull into the base tables, what happens? We can even say include interface supplies as no. When you want to buy it from a supplier, what happens? You'll be pushing it into the interface tables, and then if you say is no, whatever is available on the interface tables will not be considered as a supply at all because it is in the process of creating the purchase requisitions and purchase orders. That automation process is now going on, and so what happens? It is in that process, and so do not consider that supply as a supply. So here, what happens? There are so many demand sources and supply sources. Whichever you want to run, what happens? You cannot set it up. And then here, what happens? You pass it on. <clears throat> now, what happens? Into more supply. So many companies will not think over it on the 
uh, what happens possible inclusions and exclusions of supply and source and then click on okay and then what happens they will not run this content on a periodic basis every two hours or every three hours they will not run it with these ones so i will not give or not include more order supplies no no fine click on okay and then i will not schedule the concurrent click on schedule it and then what happens i will not make it as periodic i will not run it every one hour i want us no end date at all I click on okay and then the moment i run it what happens it will not run once and then afterwards what happens it will be running periodically after every one hour so click on okay it now gives a caution because the end date is not there so a caution message is coming accept this caution chalega fine click on okay and then submit this concurrent so i know scheduled this concurrent fine click on submit now so this will be running on the periodic basis so, click on okay submit the concurrent and i will now say submit another request no and go the click on fine now so it is now going to run so once when it is completed what happens it will now have a shed pending scheduled concurrent once when it is completed what happens the next concurrent the venue any concurrent which is having a pending scheduled status is called a srs standard request submission and that will be running periodically and then if here if you go and then see this now it will be having an output because what happens we not included this one, and then all of the output is come so since i have not given a stocking as yes it may not have created a more order but it is not at least informed it now <coughs> this completes the min max planning at the submit level fine so we can run it periodically so people will be having a thought process on the, designing the parameters on this now and then what happens run the concurrent as a srs so there what happens is long keep on running and you need not have to worry fine they only have to transact the more orders if and then after 3 hours what happens the stock level if the supply if the what happens if the available quantity has now gone below 9 then only what happens it will not get a more order if the restocking is going yes otherwise what happens it will not be getting it so schedule it in appropriate manner what happens so that what happens it will not jump into 3 whenever required <coughs> and then do not consider any unnecessary supplies and unnecessary demands just exclude them so that what happens your available quantity will be exactly reflecting your organization's policy basically so that what happens it jumps with step number 3 and then go ahead and then do it now in this case what happens if you see 5 and 40 what happens it will be giving 45 suppose let us say i have 40 and 100 here and then available quantity is zero and then if the min max level is set to 30 and 60 what happens it will not only recommend 60 fine first is 60 and then i need 100 over here now. so here in 100 what happens it will now be minimum is 30 the system's logic has been written in such a fashion that what happens it will be giving you 60 plus 40 is output so one trolley of 60 and then the next trolley of 40 will now meet nearer to 100 idea is what meet the 100 as what as it will now be meeting in this case 40 and 200 30 and 60 it will now recommend only three full trolleys fine but if you go for let us say what happens 60 plus 60 plus 50 plus 30 then also 200 is coming but it will not do that you don't have any algorithm to write it now if you write an algorithm for 60 plus 60 plus what happens another 20 is there 20 is not there possible now that is there if you can write an algorithm for 60 plus 60 plus 50 plus 30 what happens people will appreciate it. because what happens you have to be very near to the required quantity right step number 4 must be met nearly actually and the people will be giving their own logic and then what happens if you technically you can write the code behind the back end what happens we can even modify this coding this is standard coding available so you can even modify the coding and then meet the needs of this people so the orders so what happens the orders so 60 plus 60 plus 60 only will be coming in this case if i am giving 40 plus 220 210 20, what happens in this case what happens 60 plus 60 plus 60 plus 30 will also come and then if it is going to be 40 plus 2 40 and 220 20, what happens it will be 60 plus 60 plus 60 plus 40 the next one is what so this is how the logic is written there in the back end now but uh, what happens based upon the customers needs we can very well what happens customize this also the what happens step number 4 can be read if what happens if the technical team can code whatever the logic which the end client wants but this is the best logic which is being practiced everywhere universal now we will not try to go and then give at the org level so now here what happens i go there and then i will not transact this more right? i will not cancel this one i will not cancel this request depending schedule is not cancelled i cancel it okay okay and then answer it and close it now what happens i go there and then uh, let me transact the more order one of the more orders i'm going to transact i don't want to transact both the more orders go to more orders and then go to transact more orders and that if i don't know the number i go to the lines and then query the item right the mm percentage will go that min max test to them so on the lines tab then i can go and query it will be finding both the so sir go the lines and then since we have sufficient quantity in the main one what happens we go there so we need 40 and 5 and click on allocate so click on allocate i'm now allocating it now so allocation will be successful now so no problem at all because we have quantity and then we are given the source as a blank and so what happens it will now automatically pick the main as a source now fine go there and then select both the lines since the allocation is complete what happens transaction is going to click on transact now 
Okay, so what happens? The 45 on days will now go into your supplement and go there positive. Now you go there and then go on and have a look at the stock now and go there, go to the online availability and then have a look at the stock now. The MM percentage and then go tap. So if you go on and have a look at the stock, what happens? It will not show you a stock of what expanded. It doesn't see this now. It will not show the stock. On the maintenance up and go there and have a look at it. And here what happens? It is 950 to Now, whether you make it as supply as yes or no, demand as yes or no, it will exit because what happens? The on end itself is there. So since we have an on end, fine, if you go there, since on end itself is now 54, what happens? Whether you, you exclude the supplies or demands, what happens? It is immaterial. It will not exit out of loop because on end itself is gone. You don't have a question of on end getting negated actually. On end is always connected. And then only we can exclude the supplies, expected supplies, and expected demands, and then arrive at the so it will definitely exit now. So this completes the, what happens, you are planning at the sub level. Now we'll go at the org level. So org level I'm going to write. So here what happens, 952 is the stock. What happens, the org level means what? All the sub is put together, it will not calculate the stock. You want to have all the sub put together. So let's say all the sub put together is 1009 now. I will not keep the stock at 1200 now. Fine, go there. So let me go and then do it now. Fine, go there. I will not modify what happens, you go there. I will not query the item now. Fine, go there. Let's see. What happens? Uh, uh, percentage, MM percentage, and put it now. Commercial loan, the amount is So, here what happens? You go there, you go to the general planning table. You go to the general planning table. Here, what happens when you want to have the org level? What happens? The item attributes have been modified. You know, make it as what? As a, as a what a min max plan. So, inventory planning method is min max, and then I go there. 1200, I'm going to give now. Fine. I will not give the maximum quantity as let us say 2000. The order minimum quantity is let us say 50. The maximum quantity is let us say 1500. And then the fixed lot multiple, I'm going to give it as five. So these are the five parameters of min max. I'm not mentioning the minimum order quantity, maximum order. Order minimum, fine. MOQ is a very famous one. And then maximum and then fixed lot. Go there, commit. It's not done. Now let me run the concurrent order. We will not again run the concurrent. We will not go there. And then run the min max. This time, what happens? I'm going to run the min max at org level. And dog level, I'm going to get it. Click on dog level. And then click on OK. I will not pass on that. No, uh, no restocking. I will not do that. No restocking at all. And click on OK. Click on OK. And then click on submit. Now. Click on it. No. Click on find. So we are running it now. All done. So once when you run it, what happens? It will be running. And then you can now see the output of it. Now. At the org level, I'm planning it now. So at the item attributes, if you do it, what happens? We can very well run the org. When you're running at the org, what happens? It will not look at the submit level. At the item attribute level, what happens? It will not look up and then it will not run. So we are given the output and go there and then see it now. Go there, click on view output. Now. So go there, you see end of report is coming. Even though what happens, I given 1200, the total stock is now less than that now. It has to give me an output. Can anybody tell me why, what is the mistake I have done now? I made a mistake here. I'll tell you, there is a mistake. Fine. There is not only one mistake. All entries are mistake. Whatever entries I have made. I made what? You know the planning method as min max. This is 1200, this is 2000, this is 50, 1500. Everything is wrong. Can anybody tell me what is wrong in this now? Anybody? Even the wrong organization. I believe. Exactly, fantastic. Fine. M Priya has passed the test now. What I did is what? In the master org, I went and I updated it. So, before you update an attribute, what happens? You have to see whether the MC or OC. If I go there, nothing is MCA. Fine. All of them are OCS now. General planning, everything is OCA. So, you're not supposed to update here now. Fine. What you have to do is you have to update all the org items. Fine. Items, organization items. Fine, go there. <coughs> Click on it now. Fine, go there. And then here, what happens? I will not say MM percentage and then give a tap. There, I have to go on and do it now. Fine, go there. Click on it now. Here, what happens? Go there. Go to the general planning. There. Here, I have to update it now. Here go there, go to the min max planning, and then go there. Here I'm not going to give it say 100, and then I will know the maximum what is let us say 5000. I'm going to give it now, and then here minimum is about 100, and then the maximum is 4000. I'm putting it now, and then here I will not say fixed lot multiple is 100, <coughs> and then commit. This is the one, this will work, and the org items you have to modify. Whenever you want to uh, modify what happens, an uh, attribute, what happens, you have to see whether it is what is org controlled or master controlled. Many people used to go it. In the beginning, what happens? I used to get a lot of calls. Sir, 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 I updated that, but nothing is happening, sir. What to do? For the past two hours, I'm struggling. <laughs> he has forgotten the OCMC concept. And then this is what I said. So you go there. And here, what happens? I'll now make the restocking zeros. 
Since it is org level, what happens? It will be pushing it to the interface tables of purchasing. The restocking is yes, no, I go there. And then click on OK. And then here, what happens? I click on submit. And then here, since restocking is yes, what happens? I go there. It will be pushing it into purchasing also. The min max is running. So the requirement will be pushed into the purchasing interface tables. Go there. And then now, what happens? Once it is done, it will now go into the interface tables of purchasing. It will now give an output as well as restocking is yes. And so, what happens? Once again, I don't give another idea. This thing is supplied. Oh, I don't give a supplier at all. Source is supplied as well. Fine, let me make it as a supplier. Source has been given a blank. I can just commit. Fine. I have forgotten the source. <coughs> let me run that again. Fine. I don't know what will happen to the output. No, you can't be output now. And then the output, oh, it has not come at all. Fine. I don't know why it's so. Uh, what happens? Uh, we have now done a lot of things on this. No, fine, go there. You close it now. Fine. Uh, at the org level again, I will now query this item. Fine, the amount percentage and then you tap and find out now. You go to the what your general planning table thing. So it's min max. Okay, fine. The source type is supplier. Everything is okay. Fine, let me run it again now. Fine, go there. Alt we are alt and enter. Fine. Min and then give a tap. And then this is the org level itself. And then go there. And then here, what happens? I now say restock will be yes now. And then <clears throat> do not consider the interface supply because it must have gone to the interface also. I will now make it as no now. <coughs> and then click on run now. <coughs> okay. Click on submit now. Click on find now. Oh god, it doesn't got complete so fast. Click on view output now. Go there. It is not completing. It's not working at all. I don't know why it's so. It's not running as such. The min max planning report is not running. What I did. And again run it now. Fine. I think it's not running as such. I have to submit it now. Fine. Have I submitted it? Sorry. <coughs> Min and then I will go to max planning report. Org level. Go there. Restock is going to be yes now. And then go down. And then here, what happens? I go there. Include interface supply is no now. Click on OK. And then click on submit now. Fine. I'm going to submit it now. Fine. Click on submit. So 972 is the concurrent is running now. Fine. Go there. Click on click on find now. 972. Oh, what I made a mistake there. I think I have not pressed anything at all. Fine. Go there. So 972 is a concurrent. I'm running it now. You view the output, what happens? You can also see the road up. Oh God, why it's not coming? Restock is less, it's okay. But what happens? It has to give me an output now. What is the mistake I'm making it now? This is the org level. Check the on hand. On hand will be uh, definitely be less than 1200. Oh God, I made a mistake. Yes, once again, you're very correct now. You're very correct. Here, what happens? I made a mistake here. Here, what happens? I have not given what happens. The minimum is 100 now. I have to make a change. It's 1500. I don't know. It must be more than 1000. Fine. That is the reason. Fine. Now it will run. So you go there. 1500. I give it. Fine. Go there. I'll be able to enter. Min and then give a tap. And enter it. So at the org level, it should not be 100 actually. Go there. Maybe more than 1000. Go there. Restock is going to what happens. Yes, no. And then nothing would have gone to the interface tables. But even then, what happens? I'm now excluding it. Now fine. Because nothing is there. I click on OK. And then I click on submit now. It is now 973 is now running. I click on find now. Alt R. No complete. This time it has to give. Go there. Go there. Go there. Mandichi. We got the output. So what happens? The reorder quantity is 4000. Now what happens? It has now gone to the interface tables of purchasing. Now we will not try to import it now. Perform a rec import now. Fine. Go there. We will now go there and then perform a rec import now. And close it now. And then close it now. And go there. Switch. Go there. Go to the purchasing now. I will now give an go ahead. Alt VR, Alt and enter. Fine. Rec import. So it has now gone to the what am I rec import and go there. Rec import. And then what happens? You go there. The item which has come from this place, what happens is the inventory. Fine. Go there. Inventory is now coming. Fine. Leave it as a child. Click on OK. And then click on submit. It will not import at all. It will not fail. You can see it will be failing. Refresh data. So upon requisition import, what happens? It will not fail now. Fine. Alt R. Go there. You know, see. It is going to fail now. It will not fail. Mainly because what happens? The item is now missing a list price now. If list price is not there, what happens? It will now fail to import the requisition message. Fine, go there. <coughs> it will now fail. So go there. Requisition import is not running. So as soon as you complete it, what happens? You cannot see that what happens? It is failed. So item must have a list price to bring it into the requisition area as well. Fine. So otherwise, what happens? The import will be failing. So we can even run one more concurrent to see why it has failed now. Actually. We can even run one more concurrent to see why it has failed. It will now clearly say you that what happens, this price is missing because of which what happens, the requisition import process has failed now. 
You will now see the output of it now. Fine, let us wait for the completion of the requisition import now. So once when the requisition import is complete, automatically the create list program is also going to come. Fine. That will be an automatic running. I will go there. It is actually a request set. So click on the view output of it now, and then see what happens. Number of interface lines in error is one. Fine, it is now in the interface table. So here what happens? We will now run one more concurrent. Fine, go there. Click on submit a new concurrent, new request, new request, and then what happens is rec import the exception report. Exception report I'm going to run. And then what happens? I will now delete all the exceptions also upon running it now. And you can do it. And then click on OK. This will tell you what is the problem of that interface lines. Fine, go there. Why it has got stuck in the interface tables. So rec import exception report will now tell you clearly about why it has got stuck now. Fine, go there. And then view the output of it. It will not show you the output. The item is missing a list price in the item master. So now what happens? We go there, and then what happens? We do it now. Fine, go there. Uh, we can even correct it actually. Fine, there are so many methods of correcting it. And go there. So let us now go there. Go to the place. Go to the inventory, and then try to correct it now. Fine, go there. Switch response to the back to inventory, and then here what happens? We'll now go on and correct it now. Fine, go there. Go to items, master items, and then go to organization items. What happens is the org item form, and go there. Normal item, and then go for M1, and then go there. And then here what happens? We go there. MM percentage, and then give it a uh, min max. Fine, go there. What is the item? What is the item name? Oh, I'm in M1, so I have to be in B11. Sorry, there's no B11. Clear it and then you OK. Cancel it and close it now. Close it. <coughs> close the form and then change the organization to what? B11 now. So here what happens? We go to the organization item and then query for the item MM percentage and then it out. And then here what happens? We go there and then in the purchasing, what happens? I'm going to give a list price of let's say two now. Fine, I'm giving a list of price. And then what happens in the master org also? I'm going to give a list price. Now. Fine, go there. Click on list price. In the master org also, I'm going to give a list price. Now, fine, go there. And then I will not say the amount percentage in the create now. So, the one. so I go there. I will not go to the list price. I will not give a three here. List price is three here. And then the organization item is through now. This two now. I go there. Now, you will not see which one it is going to pick up. Now. So, in the master, it is three. And then in the org level, it is not two. I go there. And then we will now run again that what happens here. Go to purchasing and then we will now again run the requisition report. RTR, alt and enter. Go there. It is rec percentage, import percentage. And then you would have requisition import. I am running it now. Source is what? Is inventory and then click on OK. So it is still lying in the interface tables only. It is not picked up. Fine, click on submit now. So this time it will now succeed. Then click on fine. It will be succeeding now. So what happened? Okay, it is now complete. I think fine. Go there. Click on the requisition report. And then click on the view output now. <coughs> Number of interface is uh, no requisitions were created. But again, at least what happens, it has now gone to zero now. Fine. And then uh, I, 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 there is some place what happens, you have to talk to technical now. Fine. So technical will help you in what happens, uh, rerunning this concurrent actually. Fine. Requisition report should not be run immediately. Fine. The exception has been cleared actually. We have cleared the expression. And then what happens when you run the report, it's not giving any problem. You we'll know, see whether the requisition is created or not. And go to the requisition summary and then query on the item now. We will not see whether in requisition has been created or not. The amount percentage on your tab is not allowed. So it will not say there is no record. But talk to technical. So what happens? They will now push it from the what happens? Your uh, what happens? Your uh, there is an exception table. From the exception table back to the interface table is now no, they will now push it. And then afterwards, only what happens? You can now again run the interface. But there is some procedure right, by which what happens? It will be done as well. So this completes the min max planning. Is it clear now? You try to do that now with the help of technical order. If there is any problem, uh, it gets parked into one area on the interface tables, and then it has to be brought back. Basically, what happens is the exception will be marked on the table, and then the technical will now remove that field. And then when you run the rec import, what happens? It will be automatically be what happens, sensed by the system, and then it will be importing that. It's a so big Nala, in, the, yeah. um, in the inventory, does it consider the negative balance as well? Uh, in no, the negative balances will not be considered. Fine. It will only consider the positive balance. So here what happens, you go there. If you go there and you see this now. Fine. On and quantity, only positive will be considered. If the quantity is not positive, what happens? The on and quantity is not positive, I don't know. Negative balances, will not, I'm not sure about it. Fine. I'm just think for it now. I don't think uh, if the quantity is minus 5, Available quantity and then supply is now coming. It has to honor it actually. Right? Supply is coming and then it is minus five and then supply is seven. So it has to consider the available quantity is only two now. No idea at all. And just make a check of it. Logically speaking, what happens? It has to consider that even if we have a negative quantity against the available quantity. 
Okay. Okay. Any other doubts? Good. That all of you understood it now. Fine. So now, what happens? We'll now go to the next technique called reorder point planning tomorrow. Sure. Bye, all of you. Thank you, Nana. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye.